I know that we all like to think that AI and tech in general is neutral or maybe even bent towards doing good in the world. But we can be kidding ourselves if we don't recognize the way in which biases and discrimination can be built into these AI systems. And we need to recognize our own responsibility and not doing enough to prevent that from happening. And I know that this message coming from a guy who looks like me can just sound like more virtue signaling from another woke millennial, um, but it's not that. Um, I'm up here talking about this because 30 years from now, I want to be able to look back at my career in this field and know that all of us, that we did everything that we could to do the right thing. Now, none of us have set out to cause harm, not you and not me. It's not intentional, and yet it happens. Biased AI is causing harm, and it happens over and over again. Maybe some of you have worked at companies where this has happened. Maybe you've even in, been involved in some of these projects. And I can only imagine the feeling of dread that you must have felt when you realized the unintended consequences of your hard work. And I can only imagine the feelings of the victims of some of these uh, biased systems when it had real and lasting impact on their lives. A needed loan denied, a medical condition ignored or misdiagnosed, an innocent person arrested. The fact that this keeps happening at companies of different size and scale and different levels of AI sophistication makes us think that there's something systemic going on in the way that we're developing these systems. So what's the common factor? Most of us in this room are technologists, right? So let's start from the bottom of the stack and work our way up. Let's debug. So I picked one of Dataiku's standard architecture slides, right? It's not really the point. Um, it's nice and complex, as these things always are. But where can we point to, in that diagram, the source of the bias? Is it in the silicon or the processor architecture, using CPU or a GPU? Is it in the OS, Windows versus Linux? Programming language, Python versus Scala? Of course not. And you know where I'm going with this, right? The source of the bias is not in the technology, or certainly not in any one component of that technology. The bias is coming from the combination of the code, the data, and importantly, its application in the real world. And this should really be no surprise to us. This is the same language that we use when we talk about the value of AI. That it's not just one single component. It's the way that it all comes together. We talk about this. My colleague Will is talking about that later today. ROI, positive benefits. But we have to recognize that, that benefit can be positive or negative. So if it's not just the technology stack, where have we gone wrong? To find the answer, I think that we need to consider who's not been brought into this room. The truth is, it's difficult to know that you're doing well by the world when you're working by yourself or maybe in a small and often homogenous group. We all have blind spots. We all have implicit biases that we may not recognize, or which we may have trouble correcting even when we do recognize them. I know I do. So we can distill this into a simple maxim. The less inclusive the group building the AI, the, AI, the greater the risk for, for bias. And the greater the risk for bias, the greater the risk for harm. And so if you agree with that, then the answer to this challenge lies in building the human systems to ensure that inclusive happens pervasively, by default, and at every step in the development process. Sure, this includes the actual model development, the coding, but it's so much more than that as well. It's the validation of the application, the vetting of the training data, specification of the interface, and so on. And so what's needed is an organizational commitment at every step to ask who else could be involved in this process. This means that you should draw from within your company, from people who might have a perspective on that business application or the way in which the training data was obtained. Set up a customer focus group to get outside of the walls of your organization, to speak with the people who might actually be impacted by this system. And as data scientists, think a lot about model interpretability. Tear open that black box, confront what lurks inside. And when you do this, when you bring more people in, don't be surprised if they come up with some smart improvements to your application along the way. Now, DataIQ is a technology company. We've built this platform with this inclusive vision. But bring, you know, that's not going to be the solution. No technology, not ours, not yours, is the solution. It's an organizational challenge. And it's not going to be easy. Bringing more people in is necessarily going to slow things down. But we have to do it. We have to do this to get away from causing harm and more towards uh, causing some benefit in the world. And so if your organization is not swayed by this moral argument that we should do this because it's the right thing, if they're a hard-nosed business-first leader who is worried about these things, then mention the words reputational risk and see if they want to confront headlines like this in a PR crisis meeting. 
We keep telling ourselves that, building the future, that we're building the future and that we're changing the world. And in many ways, that's really true. The future is literally in our hands. So let's do everything that we can to minimize the harm and maximize the benefit of our work. And a big part of that is inviting more people into this room. Thanks very much. We'll be continuing this conversation in June.